What did it feel like? To get to watch a person unravel. What makes a villain truly unforgettable? Is it their ruthlessness, their tragic backstory, or the moments where we somehow, against all odds, find ourselves rooting for them? The Penguin, HBO's latest venture into the dark alleys of Gotham, is setting a new standard for character-driven crime dramas. And episode four, titled Chentani, proves just that. With its gritty storytelling and captivating performances, the show is a riveting portrayal of Gotham's underworld. But does the Penguin deliver on its promise of dark intrigue, or is it just another mob tale dressed up in bat-shaped shadows? More importantly, how does Kristen Milioti's portrayal of Sofia Falcone steal the show, solidifying her as one of the most complex live-action villains in the Batman universe? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. Before we dive in, take a moment to like and subscribe. If just a fraction of the 95% of you who watch but haven't subscribed yet, hit that button. It would make a huge difference in helping the channel grow. And the best part is, subscribing is completely free. In Chentani, we pick up right where episode three left off with Oz and Sophia Falcone under threat from Nadia Moroni and her goons. Vic's timely intervention allows Oz to escape, leaving Sophia in the thick of it. This episode gives viewers a deep dive into Sophia's backstory, revealing layers of trauma and betrayal that have shaped her into the cold, calculating hangman that we've come to know. The show takes us back 10 years, shedding light on Sophia's relationship with her father, Carmine Falcone, and her slow descent into madness after being framed for a series of murders. As the flashback unfolds, we see Sophia's internal struggle as she uncovers truths about her family, particularly Carmine, who orchestrates her downfall. Her desperate attempts to cling to sanity amid the psychological torment of Arkham Asylum highlight her tragic complexity. By the episode's end, Sophia emerges as a hardened, emotionally scarred character, her transformation now complete, but far from finished. Now, let's talk about Kristen Milioti, because, wow, if you thought she was good before, episode 4 will leave you slack-jawed. Milioti's Sophia Falcone is nothing short of extraordinary, delivering a nuanced and emotionally charged performance that solidifies her as the heart of the episode. From the moment the flashback begins, Milioti captures Sophia's vulnerability with delicate precision. Whether she's reliving the trauma of her mother's suicide or navigating the minefield that is her father's manipulation, Miliati keeps Sophia grounded in humanity, making it impossible not to sympathize with her even as she delves into morally questionable territory. One could argue that this episode is more about Sophia than it is about the Penguin himself. Colin Farrell's Oz, though a strong presence, takes a backseat, giving Miliati ample room to steal the spotlight, and boy does she take it. There's something almost Shakespearean about Sophia's arc, the tragic daughter of a powerful family, undone by the very system she sought to rule. But make no mistake, Miliati's portrayal ensures that Sophia is more than just a tragic victim. She's a woman taking control of her own destiny, even if that means getting her hands dirty. There's no Mary Sue's here. Her Emmy nomination? At this point, it's not just a possibility, it's practically a guarantee. Miliati doesn't just carry the episode, she puts it in a suitcase, wheels it through airport security, and throws it on a plane to greatness. The emotional range she shows from vulnerable to vicious leaves you wondering why she isn't already cast in every major series in Hollywood. But remember, Hollywood is a dumpster fire after all. The Penguin has always marketed itself as a dark, gritty crime show, but in Chentani, the series finds its balance between mob drama and psychological thriller. The dynamics of power in Gotham are fascinating enough, but when you throw in deeply personal stakes, the story ascends to new heights. The Falcone family's power struggles, though typical of mob stories, feel refreshingly intricate here, largely thanks to the show's refusal to shy away from the psychological toll such a life would take on its characters, 
Much like in The Sopranos, let's be honest, it's easy for mafia narratives to fall into the same tired tropes. Family loyalty, backstabbing, gunfights in dark alleys. But the Penguin finds ways to make it fresh. One of the more clever aspects of the episode is how it toys with the audience's expectations. It sets you up to think Sophia is this ruthless, calculating villain, and she is, but there's also a haunting fragility to her character. The flashbacks to her childhood and her tumultuous relationship with Carmine provide vital context for her actions. By the end of the episode, we understand that Sophia isn't just the product of her environment. She's the embodiment of Gotham's decay, corrupted but trying, in her own twisted way, to survive. The writing in Chentani is tight, well-paced, and emotionally charged. The flashback structure gives the episode a strong narrative flow, revealing crucial details about Sophia's past while keeping the present day action moving forward. And while there's no shortage of tension, whether it's in the power struggles between crime families or Sophia's mental deterioration, the show never feels rushed. Every scene feels deliberate, every line of dialogue meticulously chosen to reveal something deeper about the characters. For the comic book aficionados out there, the show's restraint when it comes to throwing in easter eggs might be a bit of a letdown. Sure, we all love a good Gotham reference, who doesn't geek out over a little nod to the Riddler? But the writers seem more focused on telling a cohesive story rather than cramming in as many references as possible. And that's really refreshing. Is that a missed opportunity for fan service? Maybe. But at the end of the day, the story is so compelling that you almost don't notice the lack of winks to Batman lore. Almost. I mean, who could have predicted that Sophia's undoing would involve carbon monoxide poisoning and meatballs? If that's not the perfect metaphor for Gotham, where even dinner is deadly, I don't know what is. And let's take a moment to appreciate the fact that this show has found a way to make a psychiatrist named Julian sound menacing. Trust me, I'm your psychiatrist, says every villain in every Batman story ever, and yet, when it's delivered by Theo Rossi, who's incredible, in The Penguin, it still somehow works. And I got a shout out to Colin Farrell, who is clearly having the time of his life as Oz. Even when he's not in the spotlight, his presence is felt, and his chemistry with Miliati adds another layer to the character's fraught relationship. It's clear that while Oz may be playing his own game, Sophia is no longer a pawn. She's the queen, and she's ready to flip the chessboard. In a series packed with intrigue, violence, and enough family drama to make The Sopranos look like a Saturday morning cartoon, Chentani stands out as a high point in the series. Kristen Milioti's performance alone is worth the watch. But the episode's deeper exploration of power, betrayal, and survival in Gotham's underworld gives it that extra edge. Whether or not you're a diehard Batman fan, The Penguin is proving to be a must-watch series. And with four more episodes to go, the stakes are only getting higher. If this episode is any indication, we're in for one hell of a ride. So are you ready to root for the villain? And what do you guys think about The Penguin so far? Who's your favorite character? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Okie dokie.